Welcome to my review and thoughts on Fire Island, the 2022 movie. So, third Saturday in a row, we are celebrating Pride. So, on Disney+, Plus, there is a Brie Larson-hosted show about coming of age called Growing Up. Episode 5 is about a trans woman, the good and bad that she experienced. That whole show is recommended. And same thing for the short documentary, Mac Wrestles. So, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have a bunch of jokes, none of them at the expense of the LGBTQ community. And I will get into some serious topics. Now, if you're looking for a review that talks about, oh, the movie's different from the source material, so it sucks, whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. And, yeah, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. Until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I'm the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. Now, I am a straight cisgender man. I don't say that because I'm afraid of someone mistaking me for gay, trans, any other some such thing, any other letter of LGBTQ+. But to say up front that I don't have personal experience with the, yeah, the, the, a lot of the things depicted in the movie, I'll try to be respectful. I don't wish to offend any minority. Now, let's see. So, yeah, if, if something I say is, is wrong, you know, please let me know. I'm open to editing it or even taking it down if the whole video is just bad. If just edit, please let me know which parts I am wrong about. Part of the reason that I make this video is a number of Allosis Het individuals will not listen to anyone outside of their group and so might not hear anyone go into this movie who is an ally of LGBTQ. And let's see that yes so the movie itself is rated R and it uses its R rating very well there's you know I, I did see some people saying that they didn't think there was as much sex as there should be and you know your your mileage may vary uh, you know I'm I'm not going to say that you're wrong if, if that's how you, you feel about it but there's a yeah there is sex in this movie. There's a lot of talking about sex and and such. There's drinking and drugs and just yeah, it's it's very much an an R-rated movie. And let's see that brings us to the. Uh, right, so yeah, I watched this movie once and I just got done watching it right before hitting record. Yes, the plot, a group of LGBTQ best friends gather in Fire Island Pines for their annual week of love and laughter. And yeah, so this is very much a raunchy romantic comedy. And I forgot how much I love romantic comedies. Has it been that long since I last watched a raunchy comedy? I'm not entirely... No, no, yeah. The last raunchy comedy I watched was Plan B, which I also really loved. Uh, this was the, the first... Uh, right, I should specify, because there's like a couple of Plan B movies, or Plan B titles. Uh, the one that I am talking about is the 2021... Um, I think, was that one also Hulu? And that's why I could watch it on Disney Plus here in... Yes, that one was also Hulu. Um, you know, Natalie Morales directed it. It was written by Joshua Levy and Pratsicha Srinivasan, starring Kuhu Verma and Victoria Morales. But, but it's been, like, I think it's been years since I last watched a new romantic comedy. I completely forgot. I, I might have to make more of a thing out of this. I, I forgot how much I love romantic comedies. Let's see. You know, you're. I, I know some people really don't like romantic comedies, and for sure I do think that the genre can be limiting. That's an issue. But, like, we all love love. Everyone loves love. And the people who don't are just in denial. We all love love, we all want love, we all need love. 
And I'm not saying that romantic comedy is the only kind of movie for that, but I've always really liked romantic comedies. Now, this was written by Joel Kim Booster, who also co-stars as Noah. I have to admit, I don't really know anything. Of, you know, he's, he's apparently a big comedian. I don't really follow a lot of, of current comedy. Um, yeah, I used to watch a lot of comedies, but just a lot of recent comedies just really don't appeal to me. So, but but yeah, I think he did a really, really solid job, both writing and, and co-starring. And, you know, the, the, every, every time you have a, a movie that's written by only one person, it is this thing of, well, can this one person write all the different aspects well? There's a lot of different aspects to writing a feature film. Story structure, individual scenes... Dialogue, characterization, you know, character, yeah, dialogue is part of characterization, but I mean other parts of characterization, the non-verbal characterization kind of stuff. The jokes, since this is a, a comedy, you know, okay, yeah, he's a comedian, he can probably write jokes, but all these other things, and I gotta say, I'm very impressed by, I, I, I would very much like to, to, Let's see, is this the only thing? Okay, he's he's listed as writing five things in total. One that's still coming up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so he wrote a short. And he wrote some episodes. Yeah, he wrote a short called Why You Should Stop Appropriating Gay Culture. And he wrote some for a show called Cam Kardashian. Oh. So it's like a parody kind of thing of the Cardassians. Yeah, that I'm really not fond of the Cardassians, so that's, anyway, um and something called the other two. Um yeah, yeah, sounds like it might be fun. Yeah, I I um I'll I'll look for for those, but certainly I I really like to see another feature uh, written by him because he really did an amazing job here and you know I've, I've seen some people say oh you know all the gays in this are very stereotypical I mean there's there is some stereotyping going on uh, it should be noted that the the it's it's written directed and acted by people who actually are LGBTQ uh, you know so it's it's very it's very authentic yeah, there's a lot of stereotypes going on, but it's not like I, f I felt it was very easy to tell the characters apart. The the I, I really didn't get the the yeah some some people really felt that that it was just the same character over and over. I really don't see that. Now let's see. so so yeah, there are some plot twists in this. I I quite like them. I suppose an argument could be made that at least one of them is like not super difficult to, to figure out, but no, I, I really thought they were they were all great. And that brings us to the direction. So this was directed by Andrew Ahn who right, that's you know part of the, the focus here is not just on young gay men, but a, a lot of them are East Asian, and the yeah writer and director are both East Asian as well. And yeah, gotta gotta see more directed by Andrew Ahn. He did an amazing job here. Just yeah, and. You know, that, that's another, like, direction, there's a lot of different, you know, it's it's important that all the scenes should feel like they belong in the same movie, but they shouldn't feel too similar to each other, because then we're just going to zone out over the course of the movie. And yeah, he does a great job keeping each scene from, yeah, each scene has an identity of its own. You know, some of them have, like, quick cutting a lot. Some of them have a lot of dialogue. Some of them have a lot of reaction shots. 
you know, some of them are actually fairly quiet. There's there's a lot, and and they did a really, yeah, both writing and direct, really great job keeping them varied. Now, according to IMDb Trivia, this movie sparked a brief controversy over whether or not it passed the Bechdel test. The test is to see if female characters are portrayed prominently and has three parts. Are there at least two female characters? They speak to each other. The conversation is about something other than a man. Critics said this failed miserably. Alison Bechdel herself countered, you know, who came up with the test. Being about the, the movie being about gay men, Asian gay men at that, it should get a pass, as it showed a different kind of inclusivity. She tweeted, okay, I just added a corollary to the Bechdel test. Two men talking to each other about the female protagonist of Alice Monroe's story in a screenplay structured on a Jane Austen novel, pass. Hashtag Fire Island, hashtag Bechdel test. And it is also worth noting, she didn't mean for people to like, she, she was just making a point about how far away mainstream movies are from proper lesbian representation. It's not about, you know, a movie is automatically bad if it doesn't pass those three. You know, it, she she didn't position it as a test. She was just pointing out, wow, there there's not very many movies that, that fit this. You know, there, there are movies that pass that aren't that feminist. There are movies that fail that are fairly feminist. You know? So this is one of those pieces of media that responds to homophobia by being as gay as it possibly can. It is completely unashamed of its LGBTQ identity. It's like if Pride March or Grant O'Brien was a movie. It's not trying to be the kind of LGBTQ film that you can show your parents to get them on your side when coming out. There are other films for that. You know, there's a there's a lot of great movies that and and you know shows and such that have coming out stories, stories about adoption, gay marriage, and such. And while I do personally think that those matter more, that's why I covered two more serious ones in the first two weeks of Pride this year, this one is also really important, and it does have depth and explore face problems faced by LGBTQ people, racism, classism, and yeah, in addition to starring LGBTQ people, several of them are POC. And unlike many, many LGBTQ movies, this is a happy, positive movie. It's not a tragedy. And, yeah, it's, it's you know, we need these kinds of, of things also. And I, yeah, I'm not really familiar with the cast and crew from anything else. I, I, I think I saw um, Margaret Cho... Uh, is, was she in that, um, is she the one in that, that Weird Al video tacky? Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's one of the, yeah, she's great in that. But other than that, I don't think I know any of them from anything else. And, uh, yeah, you know, why not a movie where in gay men are young, attractive, focused on hooking up? It happens in real life, and it happens for straight men and also some straight women, there's tons of movies celebrating us straights doing it, so why shouldn't there be one for gays? The only limiting thing when it comes to sex should be consent. As long as the parties involved consent, you can do anything that is consented to. And honestly, there's a lot of people whose homophobia would ease up if they realized that young gays, a lot of them, love fun partying as much as they do. You know, people who think of LGBTQ people as too serious, ones who only care about their rights, because those are all they see and hear. And again, those are more important, but this is really important as well. And yeah, I really disagree with the negative reviewers who say that all characters in, in this are just shallow. Now, let's see. So yes, I have some critic quotes. Luckily, Fire Island is not only a great adaptation, but a new LGBTQ plus type film classic that beautifully translates LGBTQ culture to the screen using its Pride and Prejudice roots to tell a masterful story about race, class, and love against all odds. And let's see... Now... Uh, let's see. Right, the, the prospect could be scary, they admit, but they were a bit surprised the more veteran actors took them under their wings so easily. I was left to shoot with what they all call some new uncles and aunties. Fire Island has an all-gay cast as well as an out director. Now, uh, to, to be clear, some, some gay people do really not like the, the movie, and that is, of course, uh, important. 
Right. Um, one one critic said the theme of classism felt totally misplaced in the modern context. Oh no, this person thinks classism has ended. Now, yeah, some some people say the narrating character Noah, as um, yeah, Joel Kim Booster's character is annoying. I mean, I can understand why they think so. I just thought he was incredibly endearing. I I really really loved following him. Now, let's see. Yeah, yeah, here's a really excellent point. I understand some of the negative reactions to this film by gay reviewers here. Our stories are still relatively rare in major media, so each story gets taken as representative of all of us. That's wrong. But the truth is that gay men often have delayed adolescent experiences if they come from an oppressive straight environment into gay life. Drugs, booze, experimentation are all parts of discovery for many gay men, and the acceptance of an adopted gay family is the safety net that keeps them from spiraling out of control. I think this humble film does a good job of explaining that segment of the young gay male experience. It's... It's failing perhaps is trying to be too polished or artsy at times. I I didn't really see that, but I agree with the, the all other than the the failing thing. And and yeah, absolutely like you really get the sense here that like yeah, some of these you know, young gay men they party really hard and it's really good that they have each other to to help you know, make sure that they don't go a little too hard on, on the drinking drugs and, and such. And, uh, right, and, and one person just has to be the party pooper. This is a movie that has a plot that can be resolved with a conversation. So you're saying it's a rom-com. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's what you're trying to convey here. The people who don't have a conversation do not actually like each other at first. And just think about in real life how many people, how many problems could be resolved if people who didn't currently like each other could just have a conversation. Yeah, it just, it's, it's it, you know, they're not incorrect, but like, it's, it's, a, it's a movie. It's an American movie. It's, yeah. Now, let's see. Um, right, and yeah, when, uh, you've got the lead character narrating throughout the entire movie about how we as the audience should feel about gay life. There was a lot of telling, not showing. There is some truth to that. I guess I just, I really felt like it worked. Yeah, and and there's a lot that that they could only tell. They they wouldn't be able to to show all that that, yeah. And I really didn't feel like the the movie only tells and doesn't show. I felt like it showed a lot as well. Uh, let's see. When the plot positioned the social commentary to the background, had a chance to actually explore gay issues by seeing these men in various situations, uh, ultimately led to a well-meaning, warm-hearted place. Moments of genuine insight, occasional laugh out loud moments. Margaret Cho will never not be a delight to watch. And let's see. Um, the yes, the outcome felt like an idea, an idea of what a gay screenwriter thinks gay men want to see. Let's see. I would have loved a high comedy version of the HBO TV series "Looking" type experience where no cliches are allowed and all characters have depth and dimension. This exploration felt a little cynical, mean, and lazy in parts. And let's see. yeah, Fire Island cleverly reimagines the classism of Jane Austen through LGBTQ culture. Fats, femmes, and Asians are at the bottom of the food chain with a ladder of status that includes race, masculinity, and abs. And Following Noah and his friends on this journey puts emphasis on the often disgusting way that gays can act towards their own community. No one should have to feel body shamed or lesser than when we are all in this crazy world together. Thankfully, Fire Island ends up 
an impossibly cute movie, thank you, with big explosive rom-com energy, gay dating mishaps aplenty. It may just be the perfect movie for a generation of LGBTQ plus people who need positivity and fun in their summer. The ensemble is so well cast, you'll likely be fighting over who is each of your favorites. Marco Cho serves wisdom and humor alike as the radiant house mom. Bo and Yang, known for being a com comedic superstar on Saturday Night Live, shines in a stirring performance by proving he's equally capable with dramatic acting chops. Joel Kim Booster, who struts around half naked for most of the movie, not a complaint in sight, brings a confident charm that was biting wit in a deserving breakout role. Matt Rogers, part of the Le Las Culturistas podcast with Yang, duo with Yang, is a scene stealer nailing every line with such precise comedic timing that even Marisa Tomei would be proud. Let's see. Um, Tomas Matos embraces the essence of the island, leaving a trail of infectious energy whenever they're on screen. There's a comfort in seeing the group act together effortlessly on screen, illustrating the safety that friends in a chosen family yearn for. With authenticity comes a comedic ease. The jokes fire thick and fast between people who are experts at quick, witty banter. Noah especially gets off more than his fair share of zingers. Every character has at least one or two moments of outright hilarity. Every single person manages to sell every single joke they've been handed. It's also amazing of walking a tightrope of good taste, since Fire Island is kind of known for being a sexual oasis. There are a lot of jokes in this film that involve sex in some way, but it never crosses the line into being vulgar. Okay, maybe one show tiptoes up to that line, and you get the sense that the writer would have gleefully pushed it even further if he'd been allowed to, but still holds back and has fun without being filthy. Hell, at times, it's downright sweet. Let's see. Also extremely refreshing is the way that Fire Island resists the recent obsession that LGBTQ-centered stories have about reconciling LGBTQ folks with their strange biological families. When the Broadway musical The Prom was adapted to film, it introduced an awkward plot where the character Barry reconciles with the mother that had disowned him decades earlier. Constantly forcing characters to reconcile with biological families is harmful because it undermines the legitimacy of chosen families, leaves little room for LGBTQ folks who don't desire a family reconciliation. Fire Island casually mentions that their chosen family is all they have, and the film never attempts to force any of them into a reconciliation narrative with biological parents, which I really appreciate. I think American culture is way too obsessed with this idea of the, the family that has to stay together. Not everybody is happy with their family. You know, I've been very fortunate that a lot of my family is, is great, you know, but there's a lot of people who don't have that experience and yeah maybe especially LGBTQ people and yeah it is not good to force people to try to stay with you know to be near people that are really really awful to them you know if you, if you are a biological um, yeah if you if you are biologically related to an LGBTQ person and you want a relationship with them, treat them well. You know, I, I'm sure there's some that still don't, you know, but a lot of the ones that don't, it's because they've treated the LGBTQ person really badly. Let's see and This film often strays really close to being sort of an insightful takedown of heteronormative tropes in these kinds of films, only to swan dive back into them the second the film needs it to. One could argue it's not fair to put that kind of pressure on one of the very few rom-coms starring gay leads, and that's not a point I can dismiss. Why don't the ones with straight leads have to do shit like that? Yet this film really does seem to have some basic points to make about the ways in which LGBTQ people relate to one another and fall in love and how it's influenced by heteronormativity. The casual racism that defines the island, the tension between casual sex and a committed relationship, the ways in which people are judged based on their bodies, size, and shape, having its two leads being on two 
opposite ends of that spectrum is reason enough for it to be asking those questions. With that kind of ambition, I just want to see follow through, and that could be asking for too much. And I do want to be clear, despite these criticisms, this is still a film I overall enjoyed, and I wish it could decide if it wants to be social commentary or, rom or a rom-com with no strings attached. I don't think it can be both. I think it would work a lot better as just the latter. Maybe. I, I should say, I may have exaggerated a little. I, I do realize there's still definitely not enough uh, movies and, and TV shows for LGBTQ people. I, d I don't mean to, to make light of that issue. You know, the, the thing I was trying to get at was that a lot of what there, a large percentage of what there is, is focused on the the hard experiences of LGBTQ people, and I appreciate that this one is much more light. It still has some serious stuff to it, but yeah, I, I yeah really appreciate that. Now, yeah, the opening does a really great job setting up the the tone and content of the rest of the movie. I really don't want to give anything away about the opening. It's it's too good. You gotta you gotta see it. Now I'm not gonna give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits what came before. I think the ending is basically perfect. Like it was 100% what is right for the movie. Some some critics say, oh, it's too obvious. I again, I just I I. I really think people gotta get past the thing of oh you know I saw it coming, yeah it's uh, sorry I almost slipped into like an offensive effeminate voice I wasn't trying to. I saw it coming yeah, you know a lot of endings you see coming that doesn't make them bad automatically. I think there are there are ways that the ending could be bad and I feel that the movie sidesteps those. Now. I have to admit, it, it has been a very long time. I, I Last time I read Pride and Prejudice, I, I was a teenager. But I have watched a lot of YouTube videos analyzing both the original text and many of its adaptations. And, yeah, you know, ob yeah, obviously, make sure you also read the original. Jane Austen's great. Um, the, the, let's see. Uh, where was the, there was a th thing that I wanted to... Yeah, it, it, this is a, a quite good adaptation. You know, it makes some pretty significant changes, obviously. You know, the, the kind of casual sex this has, and, and in, like, open homosexuality, like, you know, the, the original stories that she wrote, you know, absolutely would not have, have you know, the, these... Yeah, that, that would not have been allowed back then. You know, that wasn't allowed back then, and, uh, you know, but, but the, yeah, um, it gets the, the, a lot of the, the biggest aspects right of the, of the book. Let's see. And I really appreciate that, you know, Jane Austen is still, you know, y years ago there was Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I have to imagine was made during the zombie craze. You know, there's a... Yeah, it's it's getting... It's still being... Uh, what's the word? Yeah. Right, and, and the... Yeah, this... Um, hmm, I guess an argument could be made. Maybe not everybody will want to know, but the... Yeah, um... The major characters of this movie are based on characters from Pride and Prejudice, and if you go to Wikipedia and look up the movie in the cast list, it will tell you who the the various characters are based on, and yeah, yeah, they they do really a they they do a great job. Let's see. You know, I think part of the problem the the is just this like there's this really unfair pressure that gay people can't you know uh, 
gay people both in in fiction in in media and in real life they're not allowed to be like the stereotypes and obviously part of this is because the stereotypes were used to to spread hatred and a number of them aren't even accurate at all uh, you know the the you know yeah yeah, I'm just br really brief. I, I don't want to bring this video down too much. This is about a really fun movie, but, you know, there's this... A, a lot of bigots spread this really hateful stereotype that's not even true, that gay men are likely to rape, you know, and, and depending on when exactly the this is being said, it, they might... They might be saying that they're they're pedophiles, you know, not not adults who rape other adults, and you know, I I know I I bring this up a lot when I talk about this, but if you are worried about a group of people who are disproportionately rapists, like there's a lot of Catholic priests who are rapists and. The Catholic Church for a really long time protected them. Just, you know, when it was discovered, oh, you know, the they would just send them to another. Uh, I think they're called parish. It's it's been a while since I looked at the, you know, they would send them to another place so that they could, you know, I'm I'm sure that. No, you know, there's so much cruelty in in Catholicism. I'm not sure. I'd like to think that it's not that they weren't thinking this way they this pedophile priest can victimize even more children. I can imagine they were just thinking, well, if we let them go, you know, if we fire them, then you know, people will start talking about, oh, this person was fired and people will know, you know, that the someone in the Catholic Church did something wrong, deserved to get fired, you know. But even so, they did that, you know, and, and actually a number of the people who say that gays are rapists are hardcore Christians themselves. You know, there's there's that saying, every, every accusation is a confession. And, I mean, the Bible doesn't say that you shouldn't rape. It just says, you know, if you rape a woman, you have to marry her. That's not punishing the rapist. I'm sure there's a lot of rapists who would be very happy with being, you know, with with the with their rape survivor being forced to marry them. I'm sure that's a strategy that a number of them actually rely on. But yeah, the the you know, I don't think that it's fair that that gay men are not allowed to be the, the uh, you know are not allowed to to be the the kind of stereotypical you know there's plenty of stereotypes about white men that are not uh, straight white men that are not you know that that you know we just get to no it's yeah that's that's how we are and and whatever you know it's it's way less criticized in at, at least in the the in cult in yeah in the culture of straight white men you know then then compared to you know a lot of LGBTQ people you know it, it, I think I, I don't want to lecture the the community but there's some chance that someone watching this video needs to hear this if you are a member of the LGBTQ community be aware of internalized homophobia because the the fact that you think that certain things shouldn't you know n d members of minority groups can f feel an internalized hatred of themselves and just yeah and you know this is a movie that celebrates the way they are now the did i already mention that the the acting is all amazing it, it is. Now, there's not there's only one entry in the IMDb quotes section, but it is great, and the the yeah the dialogue is really really great. There's a there's a lot of quotable lines in this, you know. So just yeah, 
and and they do a really good job of everyone having like a voice and you know some of them yeah feel stereotypical but they do also feel like real people which I think is also part of the I, I believe part of the mission of the movie is to say yeah you know what some gay people are similar to the stereotypes about gay people but that doesn't mean that they're just a stereotype that doesn't mean they're subhuman and there there are a bunch of stereotypes in this I've seen in a lot of heteronormative media and in a lot of that it's like a negative stereotype and here it's basically like yeah that's who I am so what you know and it it's I, I think that is yeah, I, I already mentioned, it's like Pride March. It's not supposed to be this this coddling of us cishet and, and saying, no, 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 it's okay, we're, we're really non-threatening. It's like, no, it's, you know, fuck you, this is me. This is who I am. And, you know, yeah, there are some people who are not going to respond well to that, but you can't make every movie based on what people like this movie was not made for bigots it just wasn't you know the the like it's a problem in 300 that Xerxes is this really homophobic you know stereotype he's he's very rapey you know but that's because he's the bad guy and we're supposed to be f feel threatened by his homosexuality in this it's not that there's no bad gay people in this movie, but the good people are largely gay, and it's, you know, yeah, it's not asking, like, straight up, I, I think this would actually be, like, if you, if you, if, if you are an ally, and you, you think that maybe you have some, like, some homophobia that that just it's like subconscious watch this if at some point in this you know I'm, I'm not saying that you're only you know I'm there are gay people who, who do not like this movie not ever you know you you're allowed to not like this movie and and you know that doesn't mean you're homophobic but there's a lot of jokes in here that like it feels like Joel Kim Booster basically is trying to like poke at and see you're okay with that okay i'll push harder then how about how about this is that something you know like like playing operation or something just like poking at at to to see how far he can push it and i loved it it was it was so funny it just yeah now let's see yeah so the cinematography was handled by Felipe Vara de Rey, who has one upcoming and 36 completed cinematography credits. Now a number of them are shorts. I don't think... Yeah, this is not the only movie he has, but yeah, there's a... Um, he, he really nails it. Like, he, he knows exactly what to do. Just... Yeah, and the... Um, I don't know how much I want to give examples. I'll just say there's there's this part where like so some of the the gays arrive at this just like palatial estate. It's like a mansion, and the camera really captures the 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 scope of it. Now it stands in stark contrast to the house that this group of of you know the 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 found family gays that we're following which are based on you know in in which is just delicious just a, such a beautiful detail the found family gaze in this movie if you compare to the pride and prejudice book you know in that they are biological family so it sends that like subtle message that you know for a lot of lgbtq people their their found family is their family you know biological family doesn't mean as much to them because a lot of their biological family you know don't yeah they they can't see past the the gay thing and 
instead of despairing about it, they f they found other gays that that will take care of them, and they do really take care of each other, you know. But yeah, the the found family gays live in you know they they use a much much smaller house, you know. So the way that the two houses are filmed, you know, really creates a a great um, contrast there to really underline the, the class issue. Now, the editing is handled by Brian A. Cates, who has 49 editing credits, some for TV, and yeah, I gotta say, I don't really know any of the other, but yeah, um, he also does a solid job in in comedy editing in in comedy movies and and TV shows and such editing is extremely important and they do a fantastic job you know they do the classic of like a character will say something smash cut the the, the thing they said is is 100% disproven you know and like the the yeah the use of reaction shots i already mentioned just I, I, I'm so glad to see reaction shots are still a thing. I, I watch so many movies these days, so many recent and current movies, that just don't do reaction shots. And it's like, what are you... Do, do you not understand what you're missing out on by foregoing reaction shots? So really, really glad to see that there are at least some people who are still keeping that alive. Yeah, they do a great job. You know, Plan B also made really good use of, of those and... You know, yeah, so just the, you know, for, for me, the gold standard for a comedy that uses reaction shots really well is probably the, the Blues Brothers, which I realize just horribly heteronormative example to, I, I apologize, but yeah, this, this gets close to that. Like, this is, this is, the, yeah, just, they, they use really, really great, just, yeah. And let's see. And and to be clear, you know, there's no shame in not quite living up to that because that's a very very high bar, you know. And it it surpasses it in many other ways. And this was actually filmed on Fire Island, Long Island, in New York. And some of it was filmed in Brooklyn. Yeah, you know, the location shooting just amazing you really get a set like i am i'm i'm not i'm not gonna go there myself because it's it's for gay people you know it's not for you know yeah it's me as a heterosexual but i could 100 percent understand wanting to go to fire island it looks like so much fun and just yeah that's yeah that's another thing with the with the cinematography if you if you you know not I, I really not everybody is going to be aware of this already so I'm just going to say there's some there's some scenes where they're like dancing in clubs that is like you really got to know what you're doing as a cinematographer to get the camera to pick up because like the human eye can can function fine in a club you know as as well as you're supposed to in a club because we are talking like like you know not a lot of light and the the light I'm gonna say is like blue, so it's like you know, a camera that's like, you know, it it can do it. It's not beyond the technology, but you gotta know what to do with it, or it's just gonna look terrible. Like that's a thing. If if you're watching a movie and you're like, I wonder if this guy has like professional training and knows what he's doing. Watch for low light scenes. Watch for like close quarters scenes watch watch the like audio there you know these kinds of things and and club scenes like just yeah and and they do an amazing job it feels completely uh, yeah and yeah the the music was handled by Jay Wadley who has composed 42 titles in total one upcoming and some of these are shorts and TV stuff and such. Huh. Composed for some of the... For four episodes of College Humor Originals. Including Kim Jong-un is a Pokemon Master. I remember that one. Yeah, that one's 
got great music so so that's yeah um but but yeah a really really great job um there's this um at the at the at the start of the movie i believe it's noah says that basically fire island is like Disneyland and there's a there's a song called pure imagination and uh, hold on yeah, what is it originally from uh, Gene Wilder oh right that's actually that's Willy Wonka I think Wow yeah I guess that is a title um, Okay, I'm I um I feel the need to point out that apparently here in Denmark, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, th th our title for it translates back into English as the boy who drowned in the chocolate in in the uh, what do y'all call it? Melted chocolate, I guess. I mean I guess for the parents who really want to either make sure that their kid sees that or make sure they never see it. Because it's not like completely... That's not... That's 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 in the movie, you know. So, so fair, fair enough. I mean, we have... We have a word for chocolate factory. I don't know why someone felt the need... Did the person who gave it that title like like have nightmares about that scene and and it was therapeutic for them to come? Because there's other stuff in the movie. I'm I'm obsessing way too much on it. Anyway, yeah, pure imagination. You know, it sounds like a Disney song at the very least. And oh, actually, yeah, come to think of it, I guess that was a Disney live action movie, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there's a Fire Island remix for the yeah it's it's just it's perfect it's so good and in general they have multiple other remixes yeah the the um if you're wondering about some of the music like i don't know if it's all of it but they got a bunch of tracks listed on the imdb soundtracks page so you know if you're wondering wait what was that song that was playing when you know there's some chance you'll you'll recognize it from yeah now but but yeah you know when when it's supposed to be like dramatic the music is dramatic when it's supposed to be like sweet and romantic it is just yeah trust me i am i am picky when it comes to rom-com music like bad rom-com music just can't stand it so yeah 100 percent really really excellently done here and the sound design is on point yeah so the the movie is oh, yeah so the the pacing is quite good i was never bored and it's you know, it, it never really felt like it was either dragging or rushing ahead. Without end credits, the movie is 98 minutes. If you stay through the end credits, which I 100% think you should, it is 105 minutes. There's something like, you know, if you, if you just want to get to it, you can just skip. But near the very, very end of the end credits, there's something that's just magical. You got to... Yeah, you you have to. I I will talk about it in the in the first thoughts section when I when I get into spoilers. Um, yeah, I would probably say you know give it the first 30, 35 minutes. If at that point you just don't care, yeah, the movie just might not be your kind of thing. So the best elements of this, it's a tie between the positive representation, how much fun it is, how funny and like biting like the the it is it is a stereotype about gays that they like the the kind of biting wit 
and that's very much on display here. Um, actually, I think I think I'll try to find some Joel Kim booster like material. I, I if if this is any you know if this is all representative, and apparently according to reviews it is. I gotta he's he's really really funny. Um, I'm not sure I do have. I suppose. Um. I guess the the if I had to pick a worst aspect, and to be clear, this is something I kind of try to force myself to to pick a worst aspect just to say something negative about movies because I have a tendency when I talk about something I really love, I don't always mention the the you know any negatives. So I kind of choose to to force myself to pick a worst aspect. I think an argument could be made that you know yeah ultimately the movie is kind of having its cake and eating it too with saying you know heteronormativity and and rom-com stuff and then also delivering on those you know now the you know but yeah personally I don't think it's a big problem I love rom-coms and stuff that makes fun of rom-coms now uh, let's see. Yeah. So the worst thing to other, according to others, you know, uh, some some gays have said it's too stereotypical and leads to increased homophobia. And I, there's there's some some chance of of that. I hope that they're incorrect, but I, I absolutely, I'm I am not here to tell someone that they shouldn't worry about something being, you know leading to, to homophobia, which, to be clear, we're not just talking about someone yelling the F-slur or something. We're talking, like, homophobia includes, like, actual physical violence, sometimes murder. So that is a huge problem. Now, let's see. Yeah, so the thing I was most worried about was a bad balance between the positive representation and humor, which is, you know, I mean, essentially you would expect the two to kind of cannibalize each other, you know, if you're, you're either doing one or the other, and I thought they did a really great job. The, the movie exceeded my expectations, and I was really looking forward to a safe space for gays, and this definitely exceeded expectations. You know, it definitely, like... There is a focus on the the young partying kind of you know the the kind of gay yeah young young gay man that just loves to to party and hook up and kind of thing that kind of thing but it is you know it's not saying that there's something wrong with not wanting to do that there are positive characters who don't want to, to do that. You know, it doesn't try to make them out to be bad or, or like boring or something. You know, some of the characters think they're boring, but the movie doesn't think that there are, that it's a bad thing for the, you know, so the, the, let's see, you know, and, and like if the thing you're thinking, you know, no, some gays are like serious. They, they get, they, they, pursue of uh, an education and a career there's characters in this that you know one of the the gay men is a, is a lawyer and uh, you know the and and just so so yeah it's it's not and and yeah some of the gays in this are are poor others are rich you know the the it's it's f to be sh sure there are some there, there are gay people who feel that this is too too much you know and you know i i hope that they don't feel like they have to obligate it to watch it if it's going to be you know an unpleasant experience but this is very much the the yeah you know you're you're allowed to be the the way that it feels natural for you to be even if it is stereotypical and even if some people don't think you should be like that. Here's a movie, and here's a bunch of characters who say, fuck that, let's have fun. Now, the trailer does give at least a little bit too much away, but it is also really, it's it's funny and really gives you a strong sense of what the movie is like. You know, I absolutely love the trailer. I'm glad I watched it before watching the movie. 
and just yeah it's it's so so good and yeah the the trailer will give you a very strong sense of if it is just too gay for you now let's see the yeah the cover and poster do not give too much away and let's see the Yes, that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where it has a 94%. It is certified fresh. And the consensus brought to life by a tremendously talented cast, the breezily entertaining Fire Island proves there are still fresh ways to update Austin. And of the 112 reviews, there are only 7 rotten. It has a 66% based on over 250 ratings from the audience, an average rating of 3.5 out of 5 and um yeah there's um there's photos on rotten tomatoes and a bunch of them are from the wrong fire island although i think that fire island is from the same year so i suppose there's some, you know, you can somewhat understand. What what did the rotten ones say? Right, there's one that says there's a startling conventionality conservativeness, it's political and aesthetic approach, maybe. And let's see. Yeah, this person says it pales in comparison to Bridget Jones. I haven't watched those movies, but I can imagine. I, I hear they they really nail the yeah. Um, let's see. One person says the screenplay is dull and overwritten, which you know, to each their own. Um, let's see. Yeah, this one person says it doesn't possess enough substance to sustain itself. I disagree. And another person says it feels hemmed in by its source material, even when being loose and irreverent with it. It's definitely loose and irreverent. I didn't feel like it was hemmed in at all, but yeah. Um, let's see. One person says it's a mess, few bright spots, some mildly funny jokes. And yeah, one person says, you know, the movie occasionally embraces overused cliches and contrivances, which. You know, I already addressed that. Which brings us to Metacritic, where it has a 72 from critics based on 32 critic reviews. 25 are uh, positive, 7 are mixed. And let's see. Yeah, the, the mixed ones, they're not that negative. Um... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, like, you know, maybe they don't love it. Yeah, one person says the pace is slacker than it should be. Yeah, maybe somewhat. It wants to be fun, not necessarily profound. Don't go looking for something that will last. Huh, <laughs> cute. Because the, because the hookups, too, yeah. And the, yeah, so, um... Users gave it a 8.2 out of 10. 83 rating, 74 positive, 5 mixed, 4 negative. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so there's three negative reviews. Two of them just say it's boring, and one says it's soulless with one-dimensional characters. Dialogue from 2014. Bowen can't do drama. So yeah, I, I completely disagree. Um, so the mixed ones, one says I'm watching it only because I'm bored. Another says plot-wise standard formula. Another's also talking about formula. Um, let's see. And. Another says it's superficial, dynamics, yeah, so on IMDB there are 96 user reviews, or 86 if you don't count the ones with spoilers. I read all 86 spoiler-free ones, and 
Let's see. Yeah, I was I was going to read the the ten spoilery ones before, like between watching and recording, but I just wanted to dive into the video. So you know, may, maybe I'll like put a link to one of the spoiler ones if I think it's really worth, you know. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll see if I still feel like maybe maybe I'll skim some of them at the end of the video or something. But yeah, um, yeah. So the ones vote. Yeah, yeah. Of these ninety six reviews, there are four one votes, ten two votes, six three votes, twelve four votes, nine five votes, eight gave it six out of ten, seven seven sixteen eight six nine nineteen ten. So yeah. It is fairly mixed um, there, though it is worth noting a number of the negative ones are gay people who are saying, I think this is setting us back. It's, I, I didn't see very many. I, I did see one so not homophobic that it's kind of sounding like he might be homophobic, but like by and large, it doesn't seem like it's a bunch of homophobes that came and review bombed it, so you know so that's great and of the 61 links uh, in the IMDb external review section 54 of them worked and were in English and it has a 6.7 out of 10 based on 12,000 votes on IMDb 25.1 gave it 7 18.4 gave it 8 16.6 gave it 6 11.6 gave it 10 7.9 gave it 9 6.6 .6 gave it 5. I, I have a hard time understanding less than 5, but 6.6 .6 also gave it 1. I think a lot of those are gay people who feel that this is making the movement look bad. Uh, let's see. And, and again, 100%, that's, that's, I, I can understand that. Let's see. And uh, 3.7 gave it 4, 1.9 gave it 3, and 1.6 gave it 2. There's not a lot of special effects in the movie, but what there is is good. There's some, there's a little bit of good stunt content. You know, it's not a very violent movie. There's not a lot of stuff that they couldn't do relatively for real. Um, so, some of the sex is funny. Some of it is just, you know, the, the, some of it is definitely there for for the the kind of you know you know it is definitely a movie in part made for for gay men to to like think wow there's a lot of hot guys there you know so which is great that's that's part of the the point of the movie and i mean there are so many movies where it's young women that are being like you know male gays all over so you know for sure gay men should also get to have that now i will put uh some links in the description box that are specific to this and some that are just like pride stuff and let's see um, yeah, um, my rating is eight fun, heartfelt, romantic LGBTQ parties out of ten, and I might watch this again later today. I'm definitely watching it again. There's no doubt that I'm watching this again. It might be later today. I had so much fun. I forget if I even mentioned, but this is on Disney+. Plus in some places, oh, right, Disney Plus in some places, Hulu in the places that have Hulu, you know, here in, here in Denmark, you want to watch Hulu, you go to Disney Plus, so, yeah, and I, I'm glad that it has gotten the positive attention it has, I do hope that in the future it will be even more positively, like, think about how many popular, beloved movies there are, that are a love letter to straight people, you know, that are all about how amazing straight men or straight women are, you know, so the, the yeah. And I, I do, right, before I, 
move too much further, I do want to point out, I absolutely realize there's definitely issues with the male gaze, uh, you know, the, the way that women are, you know, portrayed very often in movies. I, I don't want to make light of that or anything. Make it seem like I don't think it's important. Now, that brings us to the spoilers. So, if you have not watched the movie, please stop watching at this point. I don't know if what I'm going to say about the spoilers is going to make much sense at all anyway, and you really don't want to have this movie spoiled for you. Trust me. Diving right into notes taken while watching. So... I I love the vocalizing like can we can we make that a thing please can honestly the the this found family of game and I would I would be 100% open to every movie from now on having them vocalizing the the opening just I don't think I'm going to be able to unhear that and that makes me so happy I can't even say I I can't even put into words like the the just you know, cause cause it's just the usual. You know, the the music itself is just the usual, but hearing them vocalizing, bum 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 bum, the, just oh, so much fun, so charming. Just like immediately, it's like you know what? I I definitely want to spend ninety eight minutes with these guys, one hundred percent. And I really love. I uh, I'm I'm one hundred percent gonna gonna out myself as someone who does not know enough about gay culture here I do not know what the what the ringtone is but I really love it. it's like saying she's a she's an icon I said she's an icon she's a queen it's something like that you know that was that was great and I love the narration from right away I really love the you know no offense to to Jane but I I am not going to be imitating the the effeminate offensive gay voice that's not for me to do i i understand that so just i will be quoting a number of their lines i will not be doing the voice no offense to my girl austin that sounds like some heteronormative bullshit and i love that the the hookup is still in the bed it's like hi hi you're still here that's great Please leave, you know, just, and, and, you know, he explains, this is boyfriend material, I'm, I am not looking for a boyfriend. Let's see, I, I like the bit with, you know, he, he barely makes it to the, the boat in time, and, you know, one of them is like, oh, you finally started an OnlyFans, <laughs> which is just so, so relatable for, like, you know, if you're, if you're a young, poor a person who's attractive only fans is yeah and and i really i like that the you know we we see the the brief flashback to the the mimosa bar where the, or the brunch bar where mimosas were being served and you know the the like they they are gay the the patrons there are gay i appreciate that the movie didn't feel the need to force in some homophobia or something that would have felt so out of place for this movie you know um it's only internalized homophobia. I mean, it, they they don't have any like, you know, straight cis people. Yeah, straight cis people like trying to pick a fight with with gay people or shouting something offensive or something. You know, because that's not that's not what this movie is about. You know, it's and and just yeah, the the thing with you know because he's Asian, one of the patrons there calls him Jackie Chan. And as revenge, he he chugs some of the some of the mimosa himself. That was that was really funny. That's, and and the other and and yeah yeah. Um, I should start using their their names. You know, Howie like chugs some and Noah spits in, and and not like not like trying to hide it. You know, he doesn't like turn around carefully. You know, he just he does it where everyone can see. You know, to kind of really very clearly communicate. You know. Let's see. Yeah, and we get the 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 song from the boy who drowned in the chocolate sauce. I think I might just call it that from now on. That is that is truly amazing. Like, I swear that's not like 
I mean, there's a there's a bunch of Disney stuff that didn't get renamed weirdly. Like we don't call Lassie the boy down the well, you know. Just yeah. Anyway, um, the yeah the the um. Yeah, and the thing with you know we are we are hot here, we we are the hot ones here. And the thing with you know the it's it's so difficult to find a place you know fucking on this island is a logistical nightmare. Every everything is outdoors. What do you think the outdoors are for? Have you not heard of ticks? You know, just yeah. And, and I love that's you know that's the thing. It's not like someone might see me. No, it's like there are bugs. And I I really love the the bit with you know Max starts it and then you know Max says that is why straight people hate us. And then you know yeah, that's one of the only references even it gets. You know there's no character in the movie that's like a straight person who's homophobic. But yeah you know and and then Noah says well you know that and hair. Was it heteronormative pathology? Ah, uh, I forget what the re religion, maybe Christianity, something like that. Anal. Let's see, and the yeah, um, Aaron is so adorable. As the, you know, the lesbian mom of the group, and. Let's see. I th I think it is it is Howie who wants the rom com stuff, and Noah just wants to get laid. And I I did find it funny this thing of you know I promise I will not have sex before you you know what is it in the original that he sh uh, the that one of the Bennett sisters isn't allowed to get married before the other one gets married? Is that what it? It's been so long, but I think it's something like that. And that is you know. If you translate the the you know this thing to if yeah if you try if you turn Pride and Prejudice into this about gay hookup culture yeah you know it's it's no longer about marriage it's about hooking up so let's see and and to be clear there's plenty of gay people who do want a long-term monogamous relationship who get married and adopt and such and I, I, it's so sweet when, he, when Noah says, you know, my mission for this week is to make you happy. And then he does, of course, go on to say, prove that I'm right. And, then, you know, yeah, that's not going to bite me in the ass. And <laughs> it was really, really funny when, you know, standing there with the, with the cell phone. Then one of the others accidentally goes and, <gasps> you know, and dives in for it, you know, and puts it in the, you know, Covers it with rice. It's just, and and the thing with you know, do you have Apple Care? Because if you don't, that's really you know. What about the fact that I have an iPhone six in the year twenty twenty two makes you think I can afford Apple Care? That's, I really appreciate all these so relatable. You know, I, if I understand, it's been so long, but I think. Yeah, it is about, like, in part, this thing, you know, there is classism in the original novel, and it is about, but, but yeah, you know, they're talking about we're, we're so poor we'll never be able to, we're not poor poor, but we're so poor we'll never be able to afford real estate kind of thing, you know, and they're talking about OnlyFans for, for, and, and owning an old iPhone, these kinds of things. That was also funny when later, you know, you do realize they are now waterproof. Don't ruin this for me. Let's see, and yeah, we hear that Aaron will have to sell the house, and I, I do really love, <laughs> she says that the reason, let's see, the, yeah, you know, she has to, she lost all her money, she has to sell Fire Island House, Noah asks, what, how is that possible? Her response is, you know me, I've never been good with money. I was an early investor in Quibi. This is a dig at the fact that this movie was originally developed as a project for Quibi, Jeffrey Katzenberg's short-lived streaming platform that was intended to create short content for mobile devices. Quibi was a notorious failure. It launched in mid-2018 by December 2020 had folded. So that was a really, like, that's... That is that is such a burn. Like, 
Let's see. And um, yeah, yeah. The I love when when they're like you know first because it's like in in a lot of you know a lot of movies and, and TV. It's the thing of you know. Don't look, but that guy is totally checking you out. It's it's girls, you know, and she like looks a little too obvious. Like, what are you doing? You're losing, you know. And and these gay men, you know, they basically have have no shame, and they shouldn't. There's nothing wrong with it. So they just stare. And they're like, you know, it's like, well, I guess he knows we're checking him out now. It's so funny. Just Let's see, and you know, I'm. They're on, like, literally everyone on the island is there to, to party with other gays, so there's no, there's no way that checking someone out like that would be wrong. You know, everyone, by, by going to the island, you have basically, you know, you're, you're, you might as well have on your forehead, yes, DTF, you know. Let's see, and, and I, oh, the guy I I didn't I don't remember his name, but there's this guy who like you know wa walks up to them and says, "You look." Let's see. One, uh, one of them was Filipino, and it's like, "Oh, don't don't no." Uh, I'm white, so if anybody watching is white, please don't obsess over someone else's ethnicity right after you meet them it is just not like like and and that's the thing like even on fire island oh you know everyone there is gay everyone there's looking to help hook up with other gay men but don't do that you know don't don't say i bet you're filipino because like what you're saying is i've always wanted to uh, fuck a filipino you know it's like don't do it just say something else you know Anything else, almost. Just, yeah. And I, I love the... Noah is like, no, talk talk to Charlie. You gotta talk to Charlie, you know. And he does, as he points out, literally push, you know, uh, Howie. And Howie, like, you know, the falls and, and, you know, it doesn't land too hard, but still, you know, it's, it's a fall, and, and Charlie's like, are you okay? Oh, yeah, it happens to me all the time. Don't say that. Don't say, now, you know, now you sound like a just a, a mess who's constantly falling over, you know. And, and, and you know, he says, it's, it's fine. You must have strong bones. Oh, just in my knees. <laughs> That's not exactly... He's tr you know, cause cause how he wants a relationship. He doesn't want to hook up. Saying I have strong knees to a gay man makes you sound like you're just looking for a hookup. You know, so that's that's really really funny. And I I love the thing with you know you sh you should have some of this whiskey. You you can take my word for it. I'm a doctor. And like Aaron is like, oh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, she she yells, but I'm not gonna yell into the mic. And and the other have to like cover her mouth. So just <laughs> and I I love the thing with you know, it's just, yeah, as long as not a lawyer, because they're all evil. Um, actually, Will is a lawyer. You know that that is the thing. Like you always have to be careful. If you're around like well-educated people, try, don't say anything negative about lawyers until you're sure that like the people are not, you know, but that is the thing, like they're used to being around other poor people, ain't no poor person gonna be a lawyer. They probably have some, you know, that that is the thing, like obviously classism, high, you know, higher class people thinking less of lower class people is much, much worse, but there is also some of lower class people hating upper class people even if they don't like, you know, try to get to know them first is is you know I I I'm not saying like I myself hate a lot of upper class people, but you know I'm I'm not saying that that's some like that that you know, but just it it would be it's be careful about saying stuff like that. So, yeah, let's. See. And I love when when they're counting down to the sunset, and it cuts to Will, and like just his internal monologue. He's like, 
I am in hell. Please let lightning strike me and take me away from this. Just, I, he, could, he could not look more miserable. Like, just, I, I don't know if, if he, if his direction is just now imagine you hate it, or if it was like, you know, you just, I don't know, let's see, um, you just stepped in something that will never truly wash away. Like, some, some kind of thing that just, like, he could not look any more miserable. And I really like the, you know, being invited to the, the after party. And I love the thing. They, they got this great shot where he's like, you know, the... They're, they're all standing on the, is it called a pier? I think it is, you know, and, and like he walks over and talks to Charlie and then he walks back and confers with them and walks over. It's, that was, that was really great. And I, I love, you know, um, I think we should, we should probably have brought an entire bottle of wine, not the, the half, look, this, you know, and, and Aaron has her reason and then they see the, the mansion is like, okay, this bottle, you're right, this bottle is not going to, like, cut it and throw it. And I, I've seen it so many times, I shouldn't still find it funny, but not only does the glass break, but someone's, like, screaming, like, she she accidentally, like, hit a person with, the, with, a, with a glass bottle so hard that it broke, and the person is, like, screaming out that that's so funny. Just, I, I, can't, I can't explain how that's still funny. I've seen it a million times. So many, so many movies, like, across decades, still funny. And you know, at the party, they're being they're behaving very low class. You know, and they go up, and and you know, one of them's vomiting in the the you know. You know what? Don't let anybody in here say that they're better than you. Uh, you know, never mind. And you know, they're they're getting a lot of cheese. I guess you two won't be bottoming tonight. Wow. See again, like I've seen so many cishet movies where it's like straight people talking about sex. You know, so yeah, gays should have that as well. And and apparently Howie is just walking Charlie through old SNL sketches, including gays in space. And one of them says, "Well, well, like, is that like, have have you guys ever heard of gays in space? Is that like spaceballs?" Which is why I don't know if it's super easy to recognize, but I did put spaceballs behind me, as well. As, you know, I. I know I put Boys Don't Cry up for each of these Pride movies. I, it's, I think it's the only movie I own on DVD that, that has like an openly, you know, that, that's not gay, that's trans, but yeah. Um, put up Pretty Woman because it is a, it remains a classic. I acknowledge it has, you know, again, cishet AF, I'm sorry. And it definitely does have some problematic issues, which the, the in addition to that, which... Um, the Take did a really great video talking, uh, at least one video, possibly more than one. And I put Legally Blonde up there. Yes, I am considering doing a video on it at, at some point. I cannot overstate how amazing it is to hear Legally Blonde used as a verb. You legally blonded him. That was that was amazing. And, and just, yeah. Now, let's see... Yeah, I've I've come a long way. Like years ago, when I did my my video on American Psycho, like I said, ah, oh, I can't believe I know Legally Blonde exists, and then you know, yeah. Oh, I made a very specific reference to Legally Blonde, and now I'm openly talking about I might, you know, yeah. If you are gay, do do know there are some some negative stereotypes in that one about gays. <laughs> He thinks that Lindsey Graham was in the Parent Trap. I'd watch that. Same, can't can't deny it. But but yeah, um, I think you mean Lindsey Lohan was in Office. Lindsey Graham was in a different movie. No, just yeah, that's a that's amazing, and that's also like, you know, if you know, one hundred percent can relate to to these young gays loving some some Disney. I mean, I'm gonna sound like such a snob, but I do overall prefer the original Parent Trap. But the Lindsay Lohan one is not like. There's some really great stuff in that. You know, L Lohan did do 
great two great performances in that movie and the the villain character is deliciously hateable uh, you know just yeah you know they're both both parent trap movies well worth watching they're probably on disney plus oh yeah i i know they are i don't i don't know why i'm because i'm actually considering doing videos on on both um Haley Mills did amazing in the original in the 60s version. You know, she she actually got several other movies more or less off of that, you know, cuz she was so good in, in so anyway. Uh let's see. And um, let's see what's the thing about um yeah, the, the drugs come up, and yeah, you know, Noah overhears Will and Charlie, and let's see, and and you know, it is very much this thing. Like when when you later think back to it, right? Basically, Will was worried that Howie was like Dex. You know, he's thinking, you know, you're gonna get hurt again. And the, the, you know, it's, you know, you, you, you should try not to, but yeah, you know, if, if you think that, that, you know, your friend is falling in love with someone who might post revenge porn, you know, yeah, it is the, the, and I really appreciate that later, you know, this Victorian ghost letter, the, the, you know, with these vague details, and he points out, it's not my story to tell, you know, which I really appreciate, really, really respect, you know, and, but, but yeah, you know, he's, he's thinking, I can't let my, my friend fall in love with another rape revenge poster, and his friend is probably an asshole, you know. So, so yeah, when he says he's not hot enough to be that annoying, you know, yeah, it's not a nice thing to say, but he thinks that he's saving his friend from heartache, you know. That's just, yeah. And and Noah goes back to the party, and now he's, like, talking back. I love, you know. Oh, it's this, it's this really fancy brand. You probably haven't heard of it. Is it Charlie? Because it says Charlie across your ass, you know, just... Oh, am I being annoying? <laughs> Let's see. And um. Oh, right, right. Yeah, the thing. Yeah, I, I really like. The <laughs> then you know later it's like, wh where is he? You know, he he might have been murdered. You're more likely to be murdered in your own home, and that's why I never host. Fair enough. That's a good reason. That is a good-ass reason not to host. I think if you ever decide to host, you should let everyone know that you you better not murder me tonight because I was really worried that that was going to happen, and now I'm being asked to stop speaking. Let's see. And... I really like, you know, literally last night. And, you know, he stayed up to watch. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of guys on this island who would stay up to watch me puke. He is a doctor. I think he has to. <laughs> um, and I really like, you know, Will apologizing at first. Like, Noah's like, yeah. You really need to apologize. And then it turns out he's apologizing for one of the others. It's like, oh, you're not apologizing for yourself. Okay. And let's see. Um, let's see. Ah, you know, I forget the entire context, but I really laugh when someone's saying, like, no, we wouldn't. Yeah, I... Let's see. Yeah, and I really like the thing with, you know... Okay, here's the credit card. Only buy the stuff that is like 
almost, you know, right about to um, go over the buy date stuff that's like been dented, you know, and, and they go and like the, you know, the prices are psychotic. And, and I love, um, ah, I forget which of them it was, but, but one of the gay fam, you know, is saying, you putting such a high price on this when it's so much less expensive back in like New York City is like homophobic and I don't say that lightly sir I don't set the prices I don't care and he you know and he's he's continuing to talk like it's not he's not looking for a result here that's that's I I'm <laughs> I'm sorry, I th we might have gotten off on the wrong foot here. I know you don't set the prices. I'm not trying to get a result here. I just want to, you know, he's airing grievances. That's all. And uh, just, yeah. And, and like, you know, he he's... Um, mm, ah, crap. I, f uh, I forget which of them it is. Uh, but, but yeah, one of, one of them goes back to, like, try to dent you know, one of the cans so they can get a, a cheaper price, and then Dex walks up, well, listen, I swear it was like this when I found it, you know, no, no, no it's okay, and and he showed, you know, the the key, which I can imagine, you know, you gotta, you gotta hit two cans against each other, that dents better, I, I can imagine, there's probably some kind of scientific thing there, yeah, and... <laughs> oh, I didn't really expect you to be into the, the tiny little cone, that's cute, you know, just like, I love how Will is just, like, Will is adorable. Like, just when when he thinks that he looks bad, he will straight up panic on the spot. Like, just terrible at hiding his, his yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, talking about catching feelings. and And the thing with, you know. Oh wow, I didn't know there was a house on this island that didn't have a hot tub. Oh wow. And great conversation. I love when they're debating Alice Monroe and the thing with, you know, you know, it, I mean, it's so different from her other books because, you know, so often it's like very down to earth and here she has superpowers. I mean, I don't know if she has powers. Um, the book is literally called Powers, so I'm pretty sure she has powers. Why it's, it's it doesn't the the story doesn't need her to have powers. It would be the same if she didn't have powers. So why is this so important? Then why are we arguing? We're not arguing. Then let me win. You win. <laughs> and the narration kicks in. Somehow I'm both mad and horny. <laughs> See, one hundred percent. That one that one crosses like. If I was having a conversation like that with a straight woman, or, or you know, a, a non-sapphic woman, 100%, yeah, that's okay. Um, mad and horny, 100%. Let's see. And, and yeah, honestly, I could see myself on either side of the conversation. And, and I love the, you know... It's game night. Oh, I'm terrible at games. Don't worry. It's not like it's it's super low stakes and smash cut. How are you not getting it? <laughs> you know, just a P Penelope Cruz and and the you know knows some gay icon that I don't you know. You couldn't get Marisa Tomei. You know, just yeah. You know. I I I gotta watch some more Marisa Tomei. I. This was not the first time I heard that she's a gay icon. I, I was aware of that, but I gotta admit... No. I have seen her in more than the MCU movies, okay? It's not just that, but, you know, she's great in The Wrestler. I have seen a couple of her... Um, you know, she's, she's legitimately funny in What Women Want. She, you know, she deserves so much better than what that role, the what the writing there provides for her, but she really makes the most of it. But yeah, I gotta watch some of her old stuff, too. And... Yeah, you know, Dex claims that it's because he has an OnlyFans that Will doesn't like him, which, of course, you know, Noah 
has an easy time believing because he has some prejudices about rich people. And... I gotta say, every single kiss in this movie was so, so sweet. Like, just... I love love. And... <laughs> It was really great, the thing with, you know, so I'm like, you know, I've got the, the flip phone and the light, and I'm looking for crabs. Aaron, we are literally eating right now. So did you do it? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, she was one of the great loves. We dated for two years. And I love when, when like, Noah is apparently retelling the the scenario and he's like saying you know okay maybe Charlie didn't literally give Howie a hand job at the table but that was his energy Let's see. and and the thing with you know you had 27 minutes you need more than that to fuck tell me you didn't do a puzzle and smash cut that oh the, that part goes here you know 27 minutes is not enough to do a puzzle it's not enough to have sex either it's enough for an episode of Chopped. You cannot tell me you need more than an episode of Chopped to have sex. And, you know, because, you know, Erin says lesbians never forget. So she has to stay home. You know, she's got the, you know, I, I don't know what it's called, but like she's some kind of makeup thing. She's clearly not going out. You know, she's going to eat ice cream by herself and just, yeah. And... Yeah, so they go to the underwear party where Will isn't even in his underwear. I mean, it's in the name. And really awkward dance, with, you know, Noah and, and Will. That was really funny. And, you know, the... the I really like... Ah, crap. What was his name? Because... Ah, I, I don't remember all the characters, but there's one that's, like, into the the into Will, and, you know, he's, like, very, very jealous that Noah is all up against Will, and, you know, I heard in the bathroom that, and I, I, you know, it was really funny when, when, you know, he's like, oh, so you hate Asians, you know, and he's standing there, and there's an Asian man standing right next to him at the urinal. I, I did not say that. You're putting your own stuff on me. Right, I, I wanted to briefly say, so... Peppermint is the drag queen that's doing... At first I thought it was just, like, um, stand-up, but then she invites them to a dance-off. Like, I gotta say, I never really, like... I don't, I've never had a problem with drag queens. It just... I don't know. Um, not really my thing. I think it's great. I, there's 100% nothing wrong with a drag queen near kids. It's not... You know, it's, that's that's cishet people putting their own, you know, they're looking at a drag queen thinking, sex, you know, that's not, kids are not going to grow up to be sex monsters by by being in the presence of a drag queen. But but yeah, I don't know, it's just never really appeared, appealed to me. I, I, I can kind of say the appeal, she's fun, she's very, very fun, like, commenting on the, on the dance moves and being very crass sexually with the, just that that was really really fun like I I'm I can I can I can totally understand why why some people absolutely love drag queens that's yeah and I will say you know there's um I'm afraid I cannot I do not recall the name but I thought I saw this really great like there was a um there's a drag queen that like this uh, you know this this cishet homophobe transphobe was like you know I can't tell if you're a man or a woman or something, and the drag queen just perfect response. I believe this is a direct quote. I'm more man than you'll ever be, and more woman than you'll ever have. Just oof. If you don't want a response like that. Keep your mouth shut around drag queens, cause they are not afraid to to bite back with a with a remark like that. That's just amazing, amazing comeback. Let's see. Right, I, I really like when 
<laughs> you know, so the, the drugs are apparently kicking in, and Noah is thinking, Charlie's with Howie. Mission accomplished. You know who else said that? And then, you know, that was narration, and then he says out loud, George W. Bush. You know, and Dex hears it and is like, what? <laughs> and and narration, the drugs are definitely, definitely kicking in. And he's like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and they move on. Just that was that was really funny. And and you know, he's about to go down on Dex in in public, and then like suddenly, he like, you know, and yeah, yeah, and, and let's see, yeah, and and suddenly he he like stands up. And and accidentally like headbutts no headbutts Dex. It's like um there's there's blood. <laughs> and I I love the you know so so now you know um Charlie's over there dry humping that Zac Efron looking dude. I'm okay with it. You know what neighbors too. The rare sequel that's better than the original, 100% true. It's it's legit amazing, much much better than the than the first one. And and there's the big confession in the rain, which was that early. You, know, ah, you want you just want confessions in the rain, and now, you know that that was really really funny that Noah's making fun of these rom com things, and then it does end up happening. You know, right? And I I um um. I really like that at the very end. It's just because I, I realized after taking notes, and I don't want to accidentally... Yeah, the, the bit there at the end where they hijack a water taxi from an angry lesbian. You know, the... the it is, like, in a lot of these movies, you know, the, the, the reason that they make sure to get there before the, they go all the way home, they actually... Um, you know, they, they maybe took a cab or that kind of thing, you know, and, and they point, you know, it's, it would have to be pre 9-11 for you to be able to run so close, to, you know, that's one of the reasons that, like, I'm not going to claim that I don't love, I can't believe, uh, but love actually, I acknowledge that it has some issues and, you know, uh, yeah, again, crazy as this head, but the, the, you know, the romantic thing of, you know, getting to the, the airport, completely ridiculous, considering that it's after 9-11, and you kind of get the feeling that they just, you know, it's after 9-11, but I want to do the scene, you know, they, they didn't, they realized that it would be ridiculous, but just, yeah, so I appreciate they came up with this other version of it. Let's see. Yeah, and I like Noah noting, ah, yeah, that's definitely that drug. You know, Max is on ketamine. It's technically for horses. <laughs> is that me? I look amazing, and they just start crying, and just, just, yeah. And I, yeah, and and the the confession in the rain, and there's some intimate touch, and they almost kiss, you know. And I love, you know, and, and Noah's looking for Howie, so, you know, run, you know, opens the door, and there's, like, couple, several couples having sex, you know, and I love that, like, instead of being like, oh, sorry, didn't mean to, you know, I'll, I'll be leaving, you know, no, because that's, the environment is, you know, we're all cool with all this sex around, so, you know, just asks, Howie? And all of them, like, stop, because... You never know, you know, he's clearly looking for someone, we could try to help, you know, and each of them, like, looks down at the, you know, all of the, all of the tops look down at the bottom, and like, no, so, no Howie in here, you know, that, that was really, because, like, you know, for a second, it's like, am I fucking a Howie? No, no, I, you know, he's, he's got to be somewhere else. You know, that, like, that's like, that's looking out for, you know, others. It's not like, get the fuck out of here. It's like, oh, no, no, not here, not here. And, let's see. Um, 
yeah, and and Will apologizes, and Aaron knows that Howie does need friends, and I, I really love, you know, oh, it's just one spot where we can't eavesdrop, and then, my baby is drowning, you know, it's, <laughs> And I really love the you know Will again has the has the little ice cream, and spots Noah. <gasps> you know, de deer in headlights look, throws away the the cone, and runs off. You know, and and that's how he ends up in the ice palace, which is where Peppermint is performing. That was really really funny, and like you know the the um, yeah. So so Noah comes in and says you know oh so. You just thought you'd run away. Well, you ran. You know, I, I thought I'd pay you back for last night. You know, and and the thing, you know, you sent me this letter like some Victorian ghost. And let's see. Um. Uh, crap. What does that note mean? Will Noah. Ah, crap. I, I cannot tell what that noise is. But, yeah, then, you know, I, I am fun, you know, and, and okay, well, then go on stage. I didn't mean like that, you know, and and does the dance moves and, and Peppermint, like, comment, oh, Peppermint saying, you know, oh, very 90s. Oh, that's, that's West Side Story. It's, let's see. And to, to get a little bit of my, my cred back, even if Peppermint had not pointed out that's West Side Story, I would have still been like, oh man, I don't know if I would have put a name to it, but I'd be like, I've seen that before. That's definitely. Let's see. But but yeah, you know, the dance off and Will has to go first. You know, he doesn't even get like at least to see one of the others. That could maybe be like, oh okay, I can do better than that or some kind of no no has to go first, and that was also just adorable, adorkable dancing. Let's see, and yeah, we see, you know, now they're getting along better, uh, Will and Noah. I really like the thing with you. You know, the last time it went this long without us talking, it was because I called, call, because I said Call Me By Your Name was boring. Look, I'm sorry that it's not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe or something, you know, just, yeah, that was very funny. Yeah, I think I might have. Wait, was maybe it was the other way around? Well, which one liked it and whatever? But yeah, and and the singing live was was great. Uh, you know, Howie and the the two others as as backup, and you know, clearly makes an impression on on Charlie. And then we learn about the the revenge porn. I I really love. It. You know, first Noah's like I'm gonna kill him, and then Will finds out I'm gonna kill him. No, I said that. That's my thing. And let's see, and I really love Will threatening with with legal action. You know, unless you have a written waiver of consent, that's you know, then you add in the 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 um the illicit drugs. Yeah, we're talking jail time. We're talking you know, I don't know how many months. What, what, what can I do? Yeah, you know, tell you what, if you delete, if you make sure that it leaves the internet 100%, which, like, agreed, that should happen, but that's super fucking difficult with revenge porn. So, like, in my mind, like, Dex is gonna spend a while, like, just, oh my god, oh my god, I can't go to jail. Uh, you know, the, 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 which, I mean, yeah, revenge porn. I, I, there should be a very harsh punishment for that. And the, let's see, yeah, you know, also delete your Instagram I, I don't know if we can legally make him do that. If the judge sees his Instagram, they'll agree with me. <laughs> and then you have the the you know as soon as the okay see it's it's deleted. <laughs> Throws the, the the cell phone in the water. That was really funny. And then you know you legally blonded him. <laughs> And Jonathan cock blocks, but to be fair, he needs to know what happened with revenge porn. And then he's telling the story 
that was that belongs to Noah as if it's his own. You know, that was really sweet. And you know, it's his way of processing. You know, and that is another thing that, like, no, you know, he if he needs this, then he deserves to have it. It's you know, nobody should be victim of revenge porn. And I really do love the line, you know, I, I pushed you. I mean, I literally pushed you, and that's why this happened, you know. And the thing with, you know, we're not just friends, we're family. Yes, I've heard your TED Talk against monogamy. Let's see. And, yeah, nice serious talk between Noah and Howie. Really appreciate it. I am not flying spirit for you. <laughs> And the thing with, you know, we can't, you know, rush through the airport because it's not a, a pre-9-11 movie. And the, I, I, it was really, really funny when, when Noah walked in and, and Braden for the third time and for the second time where he literally must have. Oh, that's right. That was the thing with, um, yeah, you might remember me from last night. You know, but yeah, Braden's like, can I help you? Yeah, you can get a new line, Braden. I mean, at that point, Brayden must be fucking with him, right? There's no, there's literally no way that he can't remember Noah. Even if it's for a bad reason that he remembers Noah. Let's see, and... Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm such a mark for these romantic comedies. Like, when, when... How he got on the boat, and the boat is taking off, and like leaving, like it's gone, and Charlie isn't there. I'm sitting there. Come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, Charlie. You can still make it. I don't know how, but you're gonna find a way. You're gonna find a way to make it, and you're gonna make it up to him. And I really, really like the the thing that you know. Okay, do something big and stupid, and. Yeah, they steal a water taxi from an angry lesbian. <laughs> now can we go to Cherry Grove? And the, the you know, okay, this is your moment. Do something big and stupid. I love you. Too big, too stupid. <laughs> too big, too stupid was actually the original title for the second Fast and Furious movie. And the, I'm, I'm kidding, it's not that big. And, and, you know, instead of, you know, instead of I love you, just, and, and even how he's like, it's a little too soon, dude, you know, but, the, you know, he talks about all the things that he really likes about Howie, and they kiss, and it's so sweet, and just, yeah, really, really great to, to see the, yeah, yeah, and the, the angry lesbian, can we go now? And, yeah, you know, they were all so worried about the house, but it's about the people. And I really do appreciate the thing about, you know, Erin, you know, she she is the, the one, she has gone through these these things. She had a, a phase that where she had to just have a lot of fun and such. And, and I really appreciate she doesn't drag the movie down with that, you know, but she just points out, you know, the, the importance of, of them taking care of each other and, you know... Yeah, she she made some mistakes, and that's why she can't join them. And, let's see. And yeah, Noah and and Will together again. And you know the thing with the the old gay couple, and they're so sweet together. And and Will is like, that's what I want. That's really really sweet. And the yeah, Noah and Will dance together on on the pier, and it's really sweet. And it ends with all of them dancing, and then at the very, very end of the the end credits, they do. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There's a. It's written extremely well in the the end credits, in the in the crazy credits on IMDb. The final thirty seconds or so of the credits feature audio of the group doing another flawless countdown to the end of the credits. That just, yeah, the the. It was it was really really funny. I I just yeah. And that brings us to the final section, which is entitled "Notes Taken 
before watching. And oh, action! <laughs> Whoops, I forgot to check. There is no. You know what? I will. I will skim the the spoiler reviews and see if there's anything that. Let's see. Um. Yeah. So some of the spoiler reviews are really. Let's see. Um. Um, I mean, yeah, this person says the OnlyFans reference was, of course, associated with a negative character. I mean, there was more than one reference, and one of them wasn't with a, a negative character. But, but yeah, this person points out the, the, you know, some of the, some of the stereotypes that, uh, and not all of them fit. Let's see, and, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and this person puts it really well. Uh, this person gave it a 7 out of 10. This is a IMDb spoiler review, user review. Yes, as some of our viewers have pointed out, there are a number of stereotypes presented here, but guess what? They're stereotypes because there are a lot, lots of gay people out there that fit right into this lifestyle. It isn't all of gay life, but it's gay life for quite a few people. And... Um, um, yeah, one person says that there should be more to Margaret show. Yeah, but that's, I, I would be fine with like a prequel that's all about her. That's a more serious movie. But I really felt like it made sense to make this movie where very light. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, one person found the characters annoying. Um, let's see. Yeah, some people really don't like Noah, but yeah. Um, wow, one person thought Will's character was plain and boring. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I can see it. I, I really, really like Will. Um, I, I liked all of the... every character that wasn't Dex, basically. Um... Or maybe Rees also, but yeah, you know the the of the friends. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Keegan, I I thought was very funny. And, and I, I liked seeing such a positive depiction of, like, I've seen someone with, you know, the, the mustache and the very effeminate kind of thing. I've seen that in so many cishet movies where it's made, where, where they try to make it seem like all gay men are like that. So I appreciate that he's there, but he's only one of the, the you know. And in a lot of these cishet movies, it'll be made out to be bad, as if there's something inherently wrong with that, just because it doesn't fit into cishet. Let's see, and, um, yeah, some people are saying some of it is cringy. I don't think I'm good at judging cringe when it comes to, like, romantic comedy stuff. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm down for it, so, let's see, and, um, Um. Hmm. Now the the. Um. 
yeah, a bunch of people do not like the... Oh, wow, one person really didn't like that the house was... They could have... Yeah, okay, the person says the... the they could have tied in Will's profession as a non-profit lawyer specializing in tenants' rights, wrongful evictions, and to saving Aaron's house. Tie all the knots and a pretty bow to save the house as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I could I could see that. Um, I don't think the movie's missing it. I, I think that the fact that the house they do lose the house at the end of the movie, but it doesn't me mean that they have to be miserable because they're not happy because of the house, they're happy because they have each other. And I mean, at the end of the day, like, if Howie is going to be with Charlie, then they can go to Charlie's place for Fire Island next time they want, you know, if, if they continue to want to, to go, I guess it's possible. I don't know if, if people in relationships don't go to Fire Island. I, yeah. But no, the, the, um, I see what they mean. And, and certainly, you know, for how conventional the, the thing of them getting back together with, I, I see what they mean. But I, I do think that it was a, I, I really love that it ended like that. But yeah, um, absolutely love this movie. Definitely gonna be watching it again very likely very soon um yeah happy pride trans rights for human rights sex work is work and yeah have a good one